नमस्कार दोस्तों हर हफ्ते की तरह आज भी आपके साथ गुफ्तु गुफ्तगु होने का अवसर मिला है यू नो दैट एवरी वीक आई ट्राई टू शेयर विथ यू द इश्यूज ऑफ अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंक्स एंड ट्राई टू थ्रू वॉट आई फील अबाउट दीज इश्यूज लास्ट वीक आई हैड पोस्टेड एन इंट्रैक्शन विथ सी जी एम डी जी काले हु हैज गिवन वेरी इनोवेटिव थाट्स ऑन वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन दी अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंकिंग सेक्टर आई हैड प्रोमिस दिन दैट आई वुड बी टेकिंग अप द मैटर ऑफ सेल ऑफ एसेट्स बाय अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंक टू ए आर सी रिसेंटली ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ऑफ सेप्टेंबर रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया came out with uh, all inclusive uh, directions and guidance to all the entities regulated by the reserve bank of india whether it is commercial bank whether it is urban cooperative bank rrbs or uh, the nbfcs uh, this circular virtually uh, came up in um, on 24th of september 2021 and there were a lot of requests that i should uh, talk about this particular circular uh now you know that the banking regulation act has been amended and uh, the urban cooperative banks are being treated almost on par with the commercial banks or the public sector banks in terms of the regulation uh having said that uh, you will recollect that a uh, year ago uh, the supreme court uh, had uh, passed a judgment where under all the provisions uh, of securitization act could be used by the urban cooperative banks uh, for recovery of their dues and one of the area where uh, the urban cooperative banks were deprived was uh, the sale of assets to arc remember there were uh, two or three circulars uh, addressed to multi state cooperative banks in terms of arc the uh, oldest among them was in 2014 where the multi state uh, cooperative banks were uh, allowed to sell the uh, distressed assets to the uh, arcs but uh, the uh, other uh, urban cooperative banks other than multi state they were not permitted uh, based on supreme court's uh, decision uh, about allowing the cooperative banks to be covered under the surface act this decision was uh, pending for uh, a long time to come now that it has come <coughs> uh, i i personally thought that uh, this would open up uh, huge opportunities for the urban cooperative banks to sell their assets to arcs but the preliminary reading of uh, these new guidelines uh, forced me to uh, conclude it otherwise <clears throat> uh, to me uh, it is not now uh, easy and convenient for the urban cooperative banks to sell its uh, stress assets to the arcs this is principally because the new guidelines have uh, virtually eliminated uh, the lot of uh, convenient provisions which were existing for the multi state bank and now when the entire sector is uh, looking uh, to reserve bank of india to sell its assets to arcs this particular circular has a lot of complex provisions and which are required to be uh, deciphered properly and therefore i would like to deal with this subject in two parts that is part 1 today i will talk about uh, the sale of assets uh, to arc in a in a vanilla form and then in the next week i will be putting up the part 2 where under uh, the current uh, legal structure and the current reserve bank of india guidelines would be dealt with in detail uh, <clears throat> as of now therefore many smaller cooperative banks are really uh, not aware of uh, how to sell the non performing assets uh, to the arcs for that matter and uh, this video today is meant for the smaller banks for the all 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 multi state banks uh, are already aware of uh, how to do it but non multi state banks have not tasted the waters overall experience of selling the asset to arc has not been very encouraging or very comfortable as such but then i must uh, throw light uh, on as to how this has to be done remember selling an asset to arc 
is virtually like postponing the death by few years what i mean to say is that if you sell a non performing asset to arc and if the arc is not in a position to uh, recover those dues within a period uh, specified under the guidelines the uh, uh, asset would come back to you and then uh, you will have to write off that asset if the recovery is not there how this happens or the basic funda i would like to share and then um, we will look to the guidelines next week normally uh, the uh, dealing with arc is a very complex issue there are uh, right from 2003 arcs have come up uh, the uh, oldest arc is uh, the arc of icici bank limited that is arcel and thereafter around 2010 2012 A lot of ARCs came up, and if you find, if you visit the Reserve Bank of India site today, you will find that there are 28 ARCs functional. In true sense, how many of them are really functional? I don't know. And recently, the Reserve Bank of India has granted license to the uh, National ARC, uh, which has been promoted uh, with the help of uh, Indian Banks Association. Of course, uh, this National ARC will deal with the NPAs of uh, the public sector and uh, commercial banks. so for the uh, urban cooperative banks uh, there is nothing much left over there but then these uh, 28 arcs uh, do the business of uh, picking up distressed assets from the urban cooperative banking center if you look at the concept of arc uh, the full form of arc is asset reconstruction company or uh, popularly known as securitization companies what do they do uh, if you uh, know little bit of finance companies you will realize that uh, venture funds and vulture companies was a class of company where uh, high risk lending uh, was done by them and at a very high rate of interest arcs typically uh, try to pick up uh, a bad asset from a bank and they try to recover within a period of uh, say 6 uh, years or 8 years and thereafter if they don't recover uh, the asset comes back to the seller bank uh, to understand uh, the concept of sale uh, of uh, non performing asset to the uh, arc i would like to take a small example and with this example i'll be able to uh, tell you how the transaction really takes place presume that uh, you have a uh, non performing loan account of uh, 100 rupees and uh, this non performing loan account uh, is outstanding in your book you have a security value of this non performing asset in your book say around 50 rupees and then uh, you carry uh, a provision bddr against this 100 rupees say to the extent of 30 rupees now with uh, 30 rupees bddr and 50 rupees uh, security value 100 rupees outstanding technically you should be in a position to recover 80 rupees given this situation because 30 rupees you have already provided for now what arc does is arc looks at the net book value of the asset and how the net book value is arrived the principal outstanding minus the provision that you carry in your book is the net book value in the given uh, instant example if there is a 30 rupees provision the net book value of Uh, uh, this particular loan account is 70 rupees but then there is a security value of 50 rupees now what arc does is that arc would like uh, to pick up this asset below the security value that is below the net book uh, value your net book value is 70 rupees your security value is 50 rupees it would mean that technically bank should suffer a loss of 20 rupees at the sale but that loss is not estimated like that there are various undercurrents various factors which go into the valuation of uh, security at a particular point of time and therefore what reserve bank of india used to say is that if the net book value is 70 and if you sell uh, the asset at 70 ignoring the fact that uh, the uh, value underlying value for this particular loan account is 50 rupees then uh, any value which is below 70 rupees if you sell presuming that you sell this asset at a value of say uh, 60 rupees in which case you will have to book a loss on sale of asset to the extent of 10 rupees in your book but then arcs are not fools 
what do they do is that the valuation that is given by you is further compressed and they say that the value of security is 40 rupees and therefore that the loss you book would be much more than what you imagine or what you think the instant guidelines which were then prevailing would be such that sale of asset to ARC is not everybody's cup of tea now that all urban property banks have come into the fold of selling this asset they have to understand the intricacies ideally uh, when you want to sell the asset to ARC you must have a strategic planning you must have a strategic thinking and that strategic thinking near, nearly revolves around the outstanding balances the value of securities and the provisions that you carry the provisions that you carry are required to be deducted from the outstanding balance and that's how you arrive at the net book value and once you arrive at the net book value you you should try to sell your asset above the net book value ARC would, ARC would like to pressurize you to sell it below the net book value so this tussle goes on and therefore reserve bank of india used to say in the earlier guideline that the uh, sale of uh, non performing assets should be done by way of an auction e auction or actual physical auction where out of 28 arcs maybe some 5 6 arcs would uh, participate for buying this particular asset and as a banker you will sell the assets to the, the company which is giving you the highest bid and therefore while doing this it is extremely necessary for you that you understand the nuances of arc cell you, you understand the intricacies of this arc cell and these uh, sale transactions are not easy to monitor because the new guidelines are imposing several other restrictions on you which are required to be followed now when you sell the asset to uh, arc what happens is this in our own example which i was quoting about 100 rupees is the outstanding balance Uh, 30 rupees is the provision net book value is 70 the uh, underlying security is say of 50 rupees value and if you sell the asset say at 60 rupees you book a loss of 10 rupees when you sell the asset at 60 rupees what happens is this arc can pick up this account in two ways one is completely on cash basis or on a 1585 formula basis what it would mean of the 60 rupees which is the value at which the arc is picking up your asset arc will contribute 15 rupees and you will have to contribute 85 rupees that is 1585 formula in our case what will happen the 15% of the uh, sale value that has been agreed upon which is in our case is 60 rupees 9 rupees give, would be given by the arc by way of a capital contribution and 51 rupees would be given by you forget about the earlier transaction of booking of losses and booking of provisions what will happen with the 60 rupees there will be a trust trust which is formed between your bank and the arc there will be a separate uh, trust account in which the arc will credit 9 rupees and you will have to pass an accounting entry where 51 rupees sr that is security receipt would be created and this trust will be monitored by both of you that is you and the arc as soon as the asset is sold off say 50 rupees underlying security value you sell it off the arc is successfully sell, selling this particular security at 60 rupees your entire security receipt or security value is recovered forget about the charges forget about the commission that part i will deal in in the second part probably i i believe that Uh, as far as the sale of asset or the transfer of asset which the circular has come i will have to go for two or three editions probably i would like to take up a video with a detailed discussions on how to decide prices how to decide net book value what is the swiss challenge method what is the method of bidding and how arcs uh, and how uh, uh, what are the guidelines uh, which are given by reserve bank of india to arcs and what are the latest guidelines given by the reserve bank of india to urban cooperative banks we would like to do a clinical and synthetic analysis maybe two or three uh, videos would be on this particular subject uh, i feel that this is the beginner or the uh, what we say trailer for transfer of sale of assets please do watch my video share like and comment and wait for the uh, reminder of the two or three videos which would which would come up on this particular topic thank you for watching